Happy Lunar New Year, everybody. In celebration of the new year, I thought I would do something a little different for my channel. Um, I am a very big fan of Japanese history, and my favorite historical person is, without a doubt, Ashikaga Yoshiteru, who was the 13th Muromachi Shogun of the Ashikaga Shogunate. And what I was going to do today was read from this book. They came to Japan, an anthology of European reports on Japan, 1543 to 1640. Uh, the entry that I'm going to read uh, is a letter from Jesuits who were given a very rare privilege of participating in the New Year's congratulation event where dignitaries, aristocrats, uh, the rich, and so on and so forth were able to basically have a brief audience with the Shogun. Uh, this audience took place on February of 1565 just a few months later, the Iroku incident occurred where um, 20,000 picked men of the sort of ruling party um, in Kyoto at the time, the Miyoshi clan triumvirs, uh, sent 20,000 picked assassins uh, to assault the shogun's palace near the site of today's Nijo Castle. It is a very famous incident. There are many different accounts of what happened, but it is unanimously understood that the Shogun uh, fought valiantly to his death. There have been portrayals of this uh, sort of battle. Uh, two I can mention were one in the recent uh, NHK Taiga drama Kirin Gakuru and then another one would be the uh, early 1990s NHK Taiga uh, King of Zipangu. Um, Ashikaga Yoshiteru is sometimes called the sword master shogun because he was known to be extremely proficient with the sword uh, two of the greatest swordsmen to ever live were uh, his teachers, uh, Bokuden uh, Sukahara being one, and then the famous Nobutsuna Kamizumi being the other. Kamizumi uh, founded the style of sword fighting uh, he transmitted to the Yagyu clan, who in turn became uh, the hereditary sword uh, instructors for the Tokugawa shoguns of the Edo shogunate. Without further ado, I will now read the passage. Audience with the Shogun Yoshiteru, 1565. The Japanese New Year fell on February 1st this year. It is the custom of the nobles in all the kingdoms of this country to go and visit the kings from the ninth to the 15th or 20th day of the month, and take them their gifts. This is particularly observed with special strictness in this kingdom of Miyako, for the Kubo-sama is the supreme emperor, and although he is not obeyed, nevertheless all the nobles and important bonzes still go and visit him. Now it is an ancient custom for each person to take him ten choirs of paper, these choirs are much larger than ours, and a golden fan or some other present. And after these gifts have been presented, some young gentlemen take them for themselves. His mother and the queen are visited in the very same way, and some people take along costly gifts and weapons. During these visits he speaks to nobody, but he may make a gesture with the fan which he holds in his hand to some wealthy and important bonzes, but is only a slight gesture and this is because of the dignity of the honorable position which he occupies. Persons of lower rank are not allowed to visit him, even though they may present him with a house of gold. I happen to have brought from Bungo a cope with a very old brocade hood and a worn 
camblet counterpane from which Father Valela made a wide cassock with long sleeves, and so we vested he with the cassock, the cope, and other rich garments on top, together with his black biretta, and I in a kimono and a Portuguese clock. We went in separate litters, which are like the sedan chairs of Chinese mandarins, and we were accompanied by fifteen or twenty Christians. As I had nothing else available, I took as my gift a large glass mirror, a hat, a cane, and some amber and a little musk. Our house is about a quarter of a league from the palace of the Kubo-sama, and the way thither is along straight and level roads. The palace is completely encircled by a very deep moat, which is spanned by a bridge, and there must have been about three or four hundred cavaliers and many horses at the entrance. When Father Valela and I entered, all the courtiers showed us great respect, and we waited for a little while in an apartment with the above-mentioned gentleman remaining outside. Father Valela then accompanied the gentleman two chambers further inside where the Kubo-sama was awaiting us, and having paid his respects, he came out again, and I went in. And I can assure you that I have never seen a more splendid and beautiful house built entirely of wood. The tapestries of the chamber where the Kubo-sama was waiting were woven in gold with pictures of lilies and birds, which made them most pleasing to the eye. The floors of the palace were covered with mats, which in this country are like mattresses, and these were elegantly adorned with a thousand decorations, and the window bars were the finest to be seen. When I had returned to the third antechamber, he, went, he sent word to Father Valela through his high steward, who was guiding us, that he wished to see the cope that he was wearing, as it was mezurashi, which in our language means something novel. It, it was taken into him and then returned immediately. After that, another door in the middle of a chamber was opened, and we saw the queen seated there. The old man offered her some aloes wood while we paid our respects from the doorway. We then accompanied the old man to the house of the mother of the Kubo-sama. This is a separate residence, although inside the same palace. We passed through three or four sumptuously decorated chambers and then came to the audience hall where there were many ladies seated. The old man offered her the customary gift of paper and a gold fan on behalf of Father Valela and some gilded porcelain dishes on my behalf. They then brought the sakazuki, which is a special cup from which they drink, and after she had taken it first, she handed it to her ladies to give to us, and then with her own hands she gave us the sakana, which is something like olives among us, with the hashi, which are the sticks with which they eat, and this is what is done when they wish to honor a person at court. The mother of the Kubo-sama seemed to me like an abbess of a monastery and her household like a community of nuns. So great was the silence, modesty, and good order of that house, and also because she was sitting in the doorway of a chapel of Amida. This oratory was most beautifully and richly decorated, and the figure of Amida, wearing golden diadem, with golden rays about his head, was painted to look like a lovely child. Louis Froys. Thank you all for reading, and I hope that you will investigate further all the majesty and stories of old Japan. And, Gunipachoi, Chinese for Happy New Year.